Hi and welcome to a new video. This one isn't necessarily for the Bambi DT30 oil free compressor, although I will just quickly run through some stats on it. It's a one horsepower, 100 litre per minute, uh, eight bar max, 240 volt compressor. Uh, I picked it up, cheap. It was very slow at compressing, all the gauges were missing, so I couldn't, I just quickly fitted some gauges. And so it's really slow and I've done some investigation work as to why and I thought it just might make some interesting content for anybody who wants to find out why they're all free compressors running slow or not charging up properly. Um, it just might help be helpful for someone who just want to get stuck in and see how easy it is to fix. So what I'll do, I'll sort of clamp up this uh, camera and uh, just show it charging uh, or slowly charging and, uh, and then we'll start taking its bits. So what I'm going to do now is turn it on from the mains and uh, walk around it, I don't know, it could be heard over the noise, but it's not that noisy to be honest, but with the microphone, who knows. Um, and then hopefully you can see what I think the problem is and we'll go from there. So I couldn't get any better than two bar out of it. Um, should go to about five or six bar before it kicks out, but I gave up after about half an hour and it got to two. Uh, if I pull the valve there, see it's building some sort of pressure, but what I am noticing is, I'm getting, they you can hear that, it's blowing back through the inlet, so obviously the exhaust is supposed to be the compressed air going into the tank, but it's bypassing back into the inlet, so it's losing its compression. Uh, so let's have a look inside and see what the problem is. So as I said, not sure if it's clear or not, so I've not played it back. I was getting some blowback through this, which leads me to believe that uh, the exhaust valve is an issue somewhere. Um, so I thought, well, I'll have a go, take it apart and see what happens inside. So initially, uh, these are loose. They're just loosely fitted. Take the air vent off. There's a top screw here, just holding this plastic shroud on. From there, and then that should remove, there we go. I'll just pop the screw back in so I don't lose it. And as you can see, there's a join there which is putting the air back into the tank. That's the inlet and that's the exhaust. Uh, and you've got four cap heads there. So I'll just get the tools and we'll loosen them off. So not a lot of in the way of tools required to take this apart. It's a 17 mil spanner to release the exhaust going into the tank. There you go, easy enough and just a small socket it's a i think it's six mil is it no five mil allen key so you can use five mil allen key or a five mil ratchet just to there you go just slacking that off four off and then sorry if my arm's in the way just loosen that There's no guarantee that all oil-free compressors are the same in the dismantling process, but at least it gives you an idea where you need to go. And uh, hopefully there you go, and it's off. That's it, how nice and dry is that? Let's just move the screws out of the way. And uh, let's just lift the screws out. Lots of shadows, unfortunately, today. So now with the head off, as you can see, there's a hole in the uh, the valve there. So obviously that's sort of letting the air back, come back through. So I'll get that on the bench, get some better light behind it and uh, take it apart. So hopefully now under some better light, you can see uh, the damage to the valve there. Um, what you can do, see it's just a single screw holding it in. So you just get a screwdriver in there just like slacking that off. Oh, that's tight. There you go, she's coming out. That's it. Seems to be several bits to this in the shims. You've got sort of a, a small square one there, a spring still there, 
and the main spring steel valve there. Let's see which side it's on. There was a small, I must admit, I have taken this apart before I shot this video, um, and that's what sort of gave me an idea for the content, thought someone might find it interesting. Um, so there was a small bit broken off and it was jammed in there, but I've got rid of that now. So what I've done after that was take this small part, put it on a piece of paper, measure around it. Um, it's quite an old compressor, so just trying to find parts of the shelf was hard. But after hunting around, I managed to find a, I think it's through eBay, somewhere in China, for about five pounds, six pounds it was. Uh, it took about a month to get here, but um, it was not exactly the same shape, shape and size, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but it looks like it'll do the job, and with the other bits, it's the same thickness as spring steel, so it should be okay. And uh, as I say, I, I didn't pay much for this, and it's more of, um, something to do <laughs> anything else it's not like this is a uh, what i do for a day job let's put it that way so uh yeah i'll come back in a minute with the other part so yeah there's uh, probably now a change in continuity and sound quality um a couple of reasons for this uh sound quality thing i've changed my microphone so there's a new one there so um hopefully um, that won't make too much of a difference and what also happened was i lost the original replacement reed valve i keep saying lost say mislaid i'm sure i'm within 20 meters of it but uh, i can't find it so um this expression goes it's, it's under this roof somewhere but uh, it will be so here we are that's the replacement reed for the original one there as you can see uh, i'm not going to start getting take measures and rulers out or anything like that but uh very similar length this one's slightly more bulbous at the end but the main body thickness is the same so um and it's the same thickness material and the same material so the performance should be okay and uh, it's just showed there if it fits over as you can see it covers the holes quite nicely the good thing about this one it also has pre-drilled bang in the middle so it's almost like it was made for it to be honest um and then got the other components put back into it and that should put it back to its same strength as it had before as i say it's um it's a cheap exercise this one thought it just might make some interesting content and uh and, and give me a, a larger um capacity compressor in the same time so what i've also got is the lock tight here the 222 thread lock find it's good for air fitting components it helps um air tight the joints and it'd be good just for locking that little screw in as well to make sure that it just doesn't rattle loose during use when it's charging up so i'm just going to put a little drop on now it doesn't need a lot there you go it's just filled the hole and what i'll do just to quickly off camera let's put all this back together so it's the screw the small metal piece the larger spring steel part and then the new one going on goes through there and it makes the complete piece and that literally just screws back in get it down to a point and then line it all up that seems fairly good you want it sort of as square as possible really so the loctite should a oh, little bit of a twist there there you go that should do it that brings in and there you go it is as easy as that putting it back together is reversal with the disassemble process that I showed earlier and uh, we'll fire up and see what happens so as you may notice my voice has changed again as my microphone woes continued and this last segment here showing the reassembled compressor using the reverse process for the disassembly showed earlier is where we switch it back on bang there we go and uh, it's starting to charge so it's obviously first it's quite slow on the initial so yeah i've cut in to just show it creeping up so i couldn't get it higher in two bar before and the next cut now shows it going above two bar and uh, it's charging up as normally the, the compressor is now working quite happily uh, the good thing about the oil free ones is as it says it's oil free 
so that's no big mess when you do DSM all these. Uh, finding the parts for this particular one was quite difficult and I had to get it say from China and it took a while but uh, it was say it's an easy fix once you've got the right part sort of 30 minutes top realistically so if you do have one that isn't charging it could be worth taking the top off having a look you might find the same issue and uh, say it was all under £10 to get this all done a bit of time obviously for delivery but uh, you could end up with your compressor back in a good place and uh, service life continues for it. Thanks for watching.